The song's entitled I've Got the Heart for You, and it's done by our next guest on the Silver Anniversary Edition of Country Music Time, Keith Whitley. Welcome to Country Music Time. Thanks, Dick. Pleasure to be here. This is your first visit, I take yes, it. Yes, it is. Outstanding. Uh, from your bio, you're RCA's newest artist and hottest property, and uh, doing real well for them. Well, things, things are looking up, and we're having a real good time. We've been wanting to do this for a long time, and... Things are going real well right now. That's great. Tell us about the first song we've heard, I've Got the Heart for You. Oh, that was an up-tempo song and the first release from my new album entitled L.A. to Miami. And uh, it was written by a good friend of mine named John Greenbaum. And uh, it's doing real well for us right now. I was reading Inside Country just uh, last night, the Inside for the DJs, as it was. And they gave your song, I've Got the Heart for You, the four-star rating, which was an excellent uh, song. And to play it in a solid hit, as I remember their quote. To, yeah, we're, to real, we're real proud of it. Since you're new to the industry, I'd like you to tell our listeners a, bit, a little bit about the life and times of Keith Whitley. Well, I'm, uh, I'm new to RCA, but I'm not really new to the industry. I'm one of those uh, overnight successes that's taken about 15 years to get there. <laughs> that's, the, that's the story of everyone, practically, it, this it business. It sure is. I started out, uh, as you said, I was born and raised in uh, eastern Kentucky, a little town called Sandy Hook. And I came from a musical family, musical background, so I've been playing country music just about as long as I can remember. Uh, you know, started out with the local talent shows and first one thing and another one I was just a kid and my dream was uh, always to come to Nashville. So about uh, two and a half years ago my wife and I moved down and we've been uh, been real fortunate. We, uh, we signed with RCA in September of 1984 and uh, also signed as a writer with Tree International in September of 84. And so the songwriting uh, end of my career as well as the uh, Recording end has just been going real well, and we're real happy. Since you've been in the business a while, or been paying your dues for a while, let's put it that way, who's been the uh, most, uh, who's had the most influence on your style of singing and your songwriting? Who's been some of the artists? Uh, Lefty Frizzell uh, was uh, my biggest influence uh, as a singer. Uh, I studied uh, studied Lefty singing from the time I was a kid, and also I'm a big fan of George Jones. And as far as writing, I have. Uh, have a lot of writers. A lot of the people that I'm getting the chance to write with now have been uh, uh, influences of mine when I was a kid. People like Harlan Howard and uh, Curly Putman. And since I've signed with Tree, I've gotten the opportunity to work with some of those guys and do some co-writing. So I'm real happy about that. The next song that we're going to hear from your album, L.A. to Miami, is called Miami. My Amy Loves Me After All. That's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> it is. You did great, though, Dick. <laughs> but let me ask you to tell our listeners a little bit about the song, how it came to your attention, and uh, would you introduce it for our audience, please? I sure will. Uh, Blake Mavis, who produced my new album, and I, we spent about two months going over songs for this new album. And uh, really, uh, we must have listened to hundreds of songs before we started choosing the material for, for the album. Blake called Dean Dillon one day and told him, he said, I need a hit for Keith Whitley. And Dean came over to the office and, uh, and sang this song for me. I don't think they had even demoed the song yet. It was brand new and it was written by Dean and Hank Cochran and Royce Porter. And uh, when I heard the song, it just absolutely blew me away. And uh, out of all the songs that I've run across, this is, this is my favorite. And uh, everybody at the label and all the disc jockeys who have heard the advanced copies are real excited about the song. And I uh, I think it's going to be that, that song that we've been looking for. So uh, here it is, My Annie, My Amy Loves Me After All. Mm -hmm. 